everybody, I got a really interesting and practical one for you today. Um, and it just goes to show that sometimes when you're creating videos, you go looking for topics and sometimes they come looking for you. So this was one I was working on a totally different topic yesterday, putting a video together. And my wife actually came down into the office and said she had copied a bunch of addresses out of a calendar invite and it ended up pasting in in this format. So she had 28 email addresses and names that ended up in this kind of weird stacked format. And so it was, um, you know, name with a bunch of quotes and commas and junk and then email address. So these three rows go together and then the next three go together and so forth. And she wanted to know how I could use Power Query to get that into a better format like this, cleaning up all the junk um, that had come in through the email system. So there's there's quite a, an easy way to do this. It's one where you, you need to know the trick, but once you once you know it, it's incredibly useful and it's got a lot of different applications. So let's um, let's jump into Power Query. Um, so here's the raw data. Um, and let's let's keep the raw data intact and just reference this. And we'll call this this reference file test data. And that's what we'll work on. Okay. So the first thing the first thing we're going to want to do with this is we're going to want to add an index. And it doesn't really matter for these purposes um, whether it's a zero-based index or a, a one-based index. We'll just use a zero-based index because um, it's easy to just click without having to go through any other options. And then if we think about what we want to do here, what we want to do, we know this is going to involve a pivot because pivot is taking rows and turning them into columns. And so we know from... Um, the previous slide that I showed that we want to actually take this this set of rows and turn them into three columns um, one for first name one for last name one for email address so we're gonna we're gonna pivot those into columns but we need to have a way for the the pivot to know which which element goes in which column and so what we want is something that's going to basically number these like one, two, three, or zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And if you remember going back, if you if you happen to see this one, I did one a while back on buried treasure in Power BI, functions that are just not that commonly seen, but are very useful. And the one that I talked about was modulo. And so if we, we go to add column, we jump on our index column here, and then we go to standard and then modulo. And what this is, is this is, if you divide by a particular number, it gives you the remainder. And so when we talk about mm -hmm. modulo, what we want to do here is give it the number of columns that we want. And, and if we look at what modulo gives us, like let's jump down to the fourth line here. And what we can see is if we, we divide three into in three, we get one with a remainder of zero, three into four gives a remainder of one, into five remainder of two, and then six, we go back to that remainder of zero. So it produces this nice repeating pattern that we can use for our pivot. But before we do, while we've still got all these values in the same column, let's let's clean these up. And what we can do is we can, there's there's two ways we can go about this. One is we can do replace values. And so, for example, for the quotes, what we can do is just put quote in there and then replace with nothing, and it'll take and clean those quotes out. And we could go through and do that for, for the commas. We could do that for um, the, the brackets on either side. But there's, there's a way we can do this all at once and save some steps. So one of the things we can do is we can go to add column and then custom column. And we'll just we'll just keep that called custom for now. And what we want to use here is a function called text.remove. Yeah. 
And if we look here, we can see it's just two, two parameters. One is text is nullable text, and then remove characters is any. And in this case, we're going to use a list. So we're going to put all the characters we want to get rid of into a list and then have those, those remove all at once. So we're going to take our value column. And for the second parameter, we're going to create a list with the squiggly brackets. And then the first element we're going to put in is that left angled bracket and a comma. And we'll put in the right angled bracket and another comma. And we'll put our comma in there. And those are the three text elements we want to get rid of. And so we just close that off with a squiggly bracket and then with another bracket and that looks good. So we hit OK and you can see that that clears everything out in a, in a really nice easy way. And so what we can do is we can take and we can get rid of that initial column and then move that custom over. And now what we can do is now we can do our, our pivot cleanly. And if we take on the modulo and we go to transform and then pivot column, and we're going to pivot on the custom, but we don't want it to, to aggregate. We don't want it to do count or minimum or max. We just want to say don't aggregate and just replace with these values actually in the column. So if we hit OK, it creates those three columns for us, and we can see the, the last name, first name, email address in there, but it's not exactly the format we want, but we're getting close. And so what we can do is we can take each of these and then do a fill up. And if we fill these, these values up, what we'll see is the first one gets it correct. So it's, it's Shirley Evans, Shirley.Evans. These intermediate ones are not correct, but that's okay, because what we can do is, because of the, of the modulo, it's, it's a repeating pattern. And so what we can go to here is under Remove Rows, we can remove alternate rows. And we can say the first row to remove is two, and then what we're going to do is we're going to remove the second and third rows and then keep the fourth and do that as a repeating pattern. And so if we, if we do that, what we see here is we've now got all the, the correct data cleaned in a nice way. And we've got the 28 original email addresses. So what we can do now is just take get rid of that index column that we no longer need, and then just rename these, these column headers, last, first, and email. And then we can just move first over here, and we're done. Um, so that's exactly what we had hoped to get um, when we started. And you can see that just with the the modular trick and then pivoting the data and um, with a little bit of cleaning, it's quite easy to do. Um, once you get the hang of that, it's, it's probably about a minute to do the whole thing. So I hope that's giving you some good new tools for your toolbox. I'm going to be back in the next video and we're going to take a further look at this in terms of how we can automate this process in a repeatable way using custom functions and show you some cool tricks for debugging your custom functions. So I hope you found that helpful. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us, and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources 
and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.